For the headlines, Philippines finally kicks off its COVID-19 vaccination drive. PNP versus Pideya miss encounters. Nine activists died. Six are arrested in Calabarzon raids. Mayor Biko Soto named anti-corruption champion by U.S. State Department. Philippines hunger and poverty trap. Issue of terrorism continues to surface in Kashmir and Vietnam. China passes new law to strengthen maritime and territorial rights. Live from University of Caloacan City, your home of information and updates. This is the Nation's Reform. Good day, Philippines. Good day, Caloacan. It's Thursday, March 25, and a new voice for a new reform. Delivering news with no bias. The Philippines lacks 6,666 new COVID-19 infections for March 24. Bringing the total cases to 684,311 with 91,754 active cases. 1,072 patients got well and 47 died. Raising the recoveries to 579,518 and fatalities to 13,039. Meanwhile, the United States was still leading with the most number of cases with a total of 29,923,094 with 9,116 active cases and 543,849 deaths. Globally, the total cases was 124,305,890, while the total of fatalities was raised to 2,736,298 deaths. While the COVID-19 cases in the Philippines continues to increase, the country's vaccination campaign is still ongoing, and it started last March 1. Zandria May Gagote has the details. The Philippine government started the coronavirus vaccination program last March 1, a day after Manila received the first batch of free jobs from China. China donates initial 600,000 doses of coronavac vaccines and another 400,000 doses that arrived last March 24. To my fellow Filipinos, this set your fears aside, these vaccines are backed by science and deliberated on by your expert, Filipino expert. I encourage to get you to get vaccinated at the soonest possible time and be a partner in preventing the further spread of the disease. Healthcare workers, police, and military personnel were the first to receive the Sinovac shots, despite concerns over their effectiveness. Last March 24, the country also received an almost 500,000 doses of vaccine developed by AstraZeneca. World Health Organization Country Representative Dr. Ravindra Abayasinghe has said the Philippines should expect another 4.5 million doses of AstraZeneca jobs to arrive in May through the COVAX facility. The COVID-19 vaccines have arrived and for this we can all be grateful. WHO and UNICEF are proud partners to the government of the Philippines and we have worked to ensure timely availability of COVID-19 vaccines, supporting the DOH in strategic planning, procurement, demand generation, and establishing a robust information system. The government plans to secure at least 148 million doses of vaccines and inoculate 50 million to 70 million Filipinos within 2021. This is Zandria Megagote reporting for The Nation's Report. 
A shootout between Philippine National Police and Philippine Drug Enforcement happens on February 24. And live from Commonwealth Quezon City, Abraham Zain Fajardo have special reports. The gunfight between PNP and PDEA starts here at the parking lot of a fast food chain restaurant. Last February 24, five were killed in a mise encounter between the PNP and PDEA operatives in Commonwealth Avenue. From the CCTV footage taken just a few minutes before the bloody encounter happens, it was seen that at around 5.17 in the afternoon, a white car owned by PDEA was seen pulling up to the parking lot of the establishment after the engine overheated. While fixing their car, at around 5.45 p.m., a man wearing black was seen getting out from the driver's side. Just a few minutes passed, a man arrived and he was followed by a woman wearing a white shirt and carrying a paper bag. Both persons are from the PNP. The woman ran as he was being chased by a man wearing red t-shirt who is an agent from the PDEA. At this point, things get quickly escalated as the PDEA agent fell on the ground and a policeman wearing a helmet was seen at the back of the car firing, while a man wearing a red cap can be seen firing back. Unfortunately, he was also got shot and killed. Armed individual arrived and surrounded the white vehicle. The CCTV footage was also a part of the investigation of the NBI. We uh, thank uh, the president for his uh, complete trust with the NBI. As always, the NBI uh, will stand to the challenge. There are other uh, uh, chiefs uh, na ni Director Eric Pistor with uh, strict orders to uh, push through with this case and uh, make sure that uh, this case is resolved with uh, impartiality, utmost impartiality. As of now, the investigation for the incident is still ongoing. This is Zane Fajardo, and back to you, Joe Marianne. Zane, how's the investigation going? Is there any updates about what really happened? Well, there's a lot of angles that the investigation are viewing, and one of that is the possibility that one team conduct an illegal sell bus and pose as drug sellers, and the other team have posed as drug buyers. But currently, the NBI's investigation is still ongoing, and they already gathered the CCTV footages and testimonies from the both teams and civilians' witnesses. That is connected to the incident. Jamarian. Thank you. That is Zane Fajardo reporting live from Commonwealth Avenue. A supposedly peaceful Sunday became a Sunday bloodbath as nine activists were killed in a series of raids in Calabarzon. Let's hear the full story from Punin Amurao. Nine activists were killed by police raid that spread across four areas in Calabarzon on Sunday, March 7. Groups declared a bloodbath after President Rodrigo Duterte ordered state forces to shoot suspected armed rebels in encounters right away. Lieutenant Colonel Citadel Gairan, a spokesperson for the Calabarzon Police, said the fatalities were the subject of search warrants and engaged police and soldiers in armed confrontations. Isang legitimate operation, mayro tayong search warrant at uh, ay pinag ito ay galing sa sa korte, inutusan tayong implement. So, inimplement lang natin kung ano nakasaad doon sa search warrant. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque guarantees during his virtual press briefing on March 8 that the government has an obligation to investigate the killings. He said it will be included in investigations being conducted by the Department of Justice led drug war review panel. Pero ang tanong mo, meron bang distinction between dun sa mga aktivista at mga reberde? Siyempre po meron. Isa po yan sa cardinal principle ng IHL. One of the basic limitations po ng uh, means and method is always distinguish kay nakailangan. Uh, tatargetin mo lang yung mga kabahagi sa labanan at huwag mong tatargetin yung mga hindi kabahagi gaya ng sibilyan. Kaya ang sagot ko po, dun sa mga napatay na mga aktivista, ang obligasyon ng Estado po iimbestigahan at kung makita nila na meron talagang dapat parusahan, ang obligasyon ay lilitisin at paparusahan ang mga pumatay. 
after the incident, the petitioner against anti-terror law once again filed another plea for the Supreme Court to temporarily stop the implementation of the Revel Anti-Terrorism Act of 2020. The ATA lawyers raised the alarm about search warrants that could be issued under the anti-terrorism law, which does not contain clear judicially determinable standards, giving the enforcement agencies a general warrant to search and arrest suspected persons. The Republic Act 11749 or Anti-Terrorism Act of 2020 was signed by President Rodrigo Duterte on July 3, 2020. It aims to give more teeth to the 2007 Human Security Act to strengthen the campaign against terrorism and related activities. Many disagree with the law because of certain provisions that allegedly threaten human rights. Pauline Amorau reporting for The Nation's Report. Up next, Pasig Mayor Vico Soto recognized by U.S. as anti-corruption champion. And for our news feature, many urban poor suffers from this pandemic and many families experience hunger and fall into the trap of hunger and poverty. Only here on the nation's reform. To my fellow Filipinos, today we face the very grave threat of the novel coronavirus disease 2019 or COVID-19. Noong nakalipas na Enero 22, taong 2020, na itala sa Pilipinas ang kumakalat na sakit na COVID-19. Batid sa kaalaman ng lahat ang pait at sakit na dulot ng pandemyang ito. Ang ating bansa ay hindi handa sa sakunang ating kinakaharap hanggang sa kasalukuyang panahon. Patuloy ang pagdami ng mga kaso ng COVID-19 sa Pilipinas at naitala ang 633 kaso ng naturang sakit noong unang araw ng Marso taong 2020. Ang inaakala ng lahat na simpleng sakit lamang ay siyang kumitil ng buhay ng nakararaming tao. Mayaman, mahirap, puti o kulay kayo mang gimal ay maaaring dapuan ng sakit na para bagang walang sinisino. Dumaan ang malalakas na bagyo. Lindol, sunog at iba't iba pang klase ng sakuna, mga korupsyon, isyo pang politikal o pang relihiyon, tunay ngang kaisarap kalimutan ng nagdaang taon. Ngunit dahil sa ating malakas na pananampalataya sa Diyos, tuloy pa din ang ating buhay. Binaguman ng pandemya ito ang buhay ng nakararaming tao, huwag natin kalimutan ang nasa'y taas na siyang magliligtas sa ating lahat. Huwag natin kalimutan kumina at patuloy na lumaban para sa ating pamilya at sa ating bayan. Pasig Mayor Vigo Soto has been recognized by the U.S. State Department as an international anti-corruption champion. Zandra May Gugota tells us more. Mayor Victor Maria Vico Soto is the only Filipino among the 12 awardees from around the globe who were awarded for the tireless work to defend transparency, combat corruption, and ensure accountability. The 31-year-old local chief executive was hailed by the United States State Department as one of its anti-corruption champions. In a statement announcing the winners, the U.S. State Department described Soto as a standard bearer for a new generation of Philippine politicians who prioritize anti-corruption and transparency initiatives in their election campaigns and in office. In a social media post, Soto thanked the U.S. Department of State for the recognition. He expressed hope that this recognition can help raise awareness among Filipinos. Soto also said in his post, if we want better long-term governance, we need to fight corruption. We have to denormalize it, get it out of our culture. Zandria Mega Gote, Reporting for the Nation's Reform. Speaking of corruption, the corruption in the Philippines worsens as it dropped another two places in the 2020 Corruption Perception Index by Berlin-based watchdog Transparency International. The Corruption Perceptions Index 2020. Sharing the same spot with Moldova, the Philippines places 115th out of 180 countries and territories. The country retains its low score of 34 out of 100 possible points while this was the same score with the 2019 study. 
its 2020 rank go down from 113 spot in the previous year after sliding 14 notches. The Corruption Perception Index uses a scale of 0 to 100, where 0 is highly corrupt and 100 is very clean. According to analysis from Transparency International researchers, corruption all around the world had an impact on how countries with the COVID-19 response, as inefficient processes have prevented governments from solving the health crisis. The top 10 least corrupt countries in the world are New Zealand and Denmark with the scores of 88 each, followed by Finland, Singapore, Sweden, and Switzerland. Meanwhile, Somalia and South Sudan were deemed the most corrupt, followed by Syria, Yemen, and Venezuela. Many families are affected by this pandemic, and the worsening situations burdens those who are poor that pushes them to hunger and poverty. Let's take a look at this news feature by Carlo Acosta. Philippine strict lockdown is one of the toughest and longest lockdown in the world that left more than 5 million Filipinos affected and more than 10 million Filipinos lost their job and impacted their livelihood to go down. As the Philippine economy crashes down to its lowest position in the decades, how are the poor Filipino families carry themselves out of the worsening poverty? Life is tough for the Rarisa family as the pandemic affects their livelihood. Malaking epekto ang pandemic dahil noon ang trabaho ng asawa ko medyo okay. Nung dumating ang pandemic, medyo nabawasan na siya ng kinikita tapos mahirap mag-budget pag kulang ang kinikita at walang trabaho. As the head of the family, Tatay Miguel Rariza's job is the only source of their income. And when the pandemic strikes in the country, his work is also affected. Ay, ako kasi ano ko eh, yung kontratista ko eh sa welder. Ngayon, nung dumating yung pandemic, medyo nabawasan na yung ano ko, yung trabaho ko ngayon eh. Minsan po sa isang buwan, bali isang linggo na lang yung nagagawa ko eh, sa trabaho ko eh. Manila City has become one of the hotbeds for the transmission of the disease, and many families are threatened by the coronavirus. Despite of the pandemic outbreak, urban poor are facing far more fear than the pandemic, and that is the fear of starvation. A survey conducted by SWS from November 21 to 25 shows 16% or out of 4.0 million families to experience involuntary hunger due to the lack of food to eat at least once in the past three months. That includes 3.1 million families who experience moderate hunger and 838,000 families who experience severe hunger. Moderate hunger is defined as experiencing hunger once or a few times, while severe hunger is experiencing often or always. There is government help through giving subsidies and emergency fund that aims to help families who are in need. It intends to alleviate the burden of the Filipino families to get back up this pandemic. But for the Riza family, the help they are receiving is not enough to support their needs. Ay, kulang pa po. Kulang Bakit? pa po yung binigay ng gobernong sa, ano, four-piece. Kulang pa po, po yun. Hmm, nakakatanggap kasi bilang four-piece, pantawid ng pamilyang Pilipino, una kami nabigyan. Kakulang na kulang po kasi, ano eh. Every two months, nagbibigay sila eh. Kulang, ilan ang anak ko? Lima. Kaya yun, kulang talaga. Kinaya namin kung ano lang yung kaya niyang kitain, binabudget namin araw-araw yun para maitawid namin yung pang-araw-araw. Some of the Filipino families don't have enough privilege to stand up and let themselves far from poverty, especially to those who are poor. Carlo Acosta, for the Nation's Reform. Do you have any vacation plans this week? Let's see what's the weather condition in Metro Manila this weekend. Here's our resident meteorologist, Gerald Proximo. Thank you, Joms. Better to prepare your umbrellas because we will be having a cloudy weather here in Metro Manila for the next days. For today's weather, there will be times of clouds and sun with spot rain showers. The chance of raining is 60%. The high temperature will be 35 degrees and the low temperature is 24 degrees. Friday is a sunny day 
we will be experiencing a warm weather with 7% chance of raining. The high temperature will be 36 degrees and the low temperature is 24 degrees. Saturday will be different because we will be experiencing a couple of showers. The chance of raining is 63%. The high temperature will be 35 degrees and the low temperature is 24 degrees. Lastly, for this Sunday, we'll be experiencing a sputtering showers with 68% chance of raining. The high temperature will be 35 degrees and the low temperature of 23 degrees. That's all for the weather forecast here in Metro Manila. Now let's move on for the climate news. In late February 2021, a massive iceberg, the ice of New York City, broke away from Antarctica's Brandt Ice Shelf. RJ Biberino has the report. The A74 iceberg covers about 490 square miles for about 1,270 square kilometers, making it two times the size of Metro Manila. On February 26, it broke away from the brunt of ice shelves on Antarctica's northern region, just months after a large crack formed in November 2020. For at least a decade, the scientists have been expecting a massive calving event. Large pieces of iceberg off of a glacier calving, also known as iceberg or glacier calving. It appears when large pieces of ice break off of a glacier. The British Antarctic Survey said that there is no evidence that climate change has played a significant role in this specific event. But what would happen if an iceberg breaks off? When the new iceberg broke off, it reduced the ice shelf area by more than 12%, leaving behind an inherently unstable ice shelf. This may cause new ice cracks and rifting, as well as more iceberg to break away increasing the possibility of runaway ice loss in the context of rising global temperatures. Whether or not this recent calving event is attributed to climate change, it is safe to say that it would make the region more vulnerable to global warming impacts. And the Philippines is extremely vulnerable to climate change impacts, including sea level rise. I'm RJ Beberino, reporting for The Nation's Report. Up next, for the international headlines. Africa is far from achieving zero hunger by the year 2030. Issue of terrorism continue to surface in Kashmir and Vietnam. China passes new law to strengthen maritime and territorial rights. Only here on the nation's report. President Rodrigo Duterte will place Metro Manila on lockdown for at least 30 days to contain the spread of the novel coronavirus in the Philippines. For Manila, may ayaw namin gamitin yan, pero kasi takot kasi sabi lockdown. But it's a lockdown. There is no struggle of power here. Walang away dito, walang gira. It's just a matter of protecting and defending you from COVID-19. says the operation is part of efforts to stem the tide of rising COVID-19 infections in Metro Manila. Kamusta ka na? Hello, this is 
National Center for Mental Health Crisis Hotline. Africa is nowhere near from achieving zero hunger by the year 2030. Africa representative for the Food and Agriculture Organization's Regional Abe Behail Gabriel told a meeting. The meeting is part of the Africa Regional Forum on Sustainable Development 7 session, which is currently happening in Brazzaville. Africa is home to over 1.3 billion people and a huge number of Africans live in extreme poverty. About 226.7 million people are starving in Africa, expanded by more than 60% in the previous year, and takes steps to extend further as the impacts of COVID-19 worsens other drivers such as conflict and political mismanagement. Uh, first of all, um, we need to scale up our ambitions and mobilize all stakeholders. It requires governments to really improve the enabling environment, empower local communities, transforming the food and agriculture systems. Yes, opportunities are there, solutions are, solutions are there, concerted actions are required. It's possible to win it. There is more bad news today from Vietnam and Kashmir, as the problem of terrorism continues to rise in both country and territory. Pauline Amurao has the story. A new wave of terror is arising in Kashmir. The terrorists begin recruiting locals to mark their suspicious plans against India as homegrown resistance to government forces atrocities. Fear of being blacklisted by the Financial Action Task Force, a global watchdog for terror funding and financing has also forced Islamabad to continue to be a lateral promoter of cross-border terror. The old names of terror organizations active in Kashmir are gradually being replaced by new ones. Local youth are also persuaded into militancy in the name of jihad, after being radicalized through social media platforms and venomous speeches of mullahs and anti-India leaders. While in Vietnam, the government labeled the Canada-based exile group Viet Dynasty a terrorist organization. The Ministry of Public Security said in a statement posted on its website. According to the government statement, Viet Dynasty allegedly funded and directed its unit in Vietnam to undertake terrorist and malicious activities and incite Vietnamese to protest and riot against the government. In September last year, a Ho Chi Minh city court convicted 20 people of the 2018 bombing of a police station. An attack authorities said was orchestrated by the people connected with Viet Dynasty. Pauline Amorau, reporting for the Nation's Report. China's new law gives coast guards an authority to fire on foreign ships in disputed waters. Abraham Zain Fajardo has the report. China has just passed a new law allowing its coast guard to use any means possible, including firing weapons against foreign vessels if it sees as violating its territory. The law mandates coast guards to demolish other countries' structures constructed on Chinese claim islands, as well as board and inspect foreign vessels in Chinese claim waters. It also authorizes the coast guard to create temporary exclusion zones as needed to stop other vessels and personnel from entering. Responding to concerns, Chinese Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Hua Chunying said the law is in line with international practices. The bill's first article explains why the law is needed to protect Chinese sovereignty, security, and maritime rights. This law comes seven years after China established a Coast Guard Bureau by combining several civilian maritime law enforcement agencies. Meanwhile, Philippines Defense Secretary Delfin Lorenzana expressed concern that because of China's new law, accidents might happen between patrolling ships of countries laying claim to parts of the South China Sea. As a result, the Philippines Armed Forces will send more ships in the West Philippine Sea, not to war in China, but to protect Filipino fishermen. This is Abraham Zain Fajardo reporting for the nation's reform. There's more news about territorial dispute. Just recently, the Philippine government expressed concern after spotting hundreds of China vessels at the reef in the West Philippine Sea. 
the National Task Force for the West Philippine Sea said in a report, about 220 boats suspected to be crewed by Chinese maritime militia troops were seen moored near the Huyan Philippe Reef or Whitsun Reef on March 7. Huyan Philippe Reef is within the exclusive economic zone of the Philippines. Concerning to the issue, Foreign Secretary Chidor Luxin Jr. said that the Philippines has already filed a diplomatic protest over the Chinese presence. Meanwhile, in an official statement released on March 22, the Chinese embassy in the Philippines described the massing of 220 ships near Holyan Philippe Reef as a normal practice of fishing vessels due to rough sea conditions. That's all for the latest and hottest news for today. For more news and information, kindly visit our website. I am Carlo Acosta. And this is Jomari Ann Peralta for, for the, the Nations, Nations Reform. Eyes and ears of the truth. And your news, our venture.